You're listening to How to Win with Mike Moore, the podcast that provides you with practical insights on how to win in every arena of life. Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to the How to Win podcast. Listen, I'm so happy to have you with us today. We're going to have a great time today. I'm in my new edition of How to Win entitled Just a Thought. And each episode, I'm sharing a thought from my thought journal with you. And I want you to think out with me. Let's think together. So my thought for today is change is a prerequisite for progress. When you resist change, you're resisting progress. I'll read that to you again. I got it from my thought journal. Change is a prerequisite for progress. When you resist change, you are resisting progress. Now, we're going to be talking about change. We're going to be talking about progress. We're going to be talking about resisting change. We're going to talk about overcoming the hurdles in front of us. But you know what? I have to be just transparent with you. This lesson is really speaking about me and my transition uh, and my handling change. I mentioned this some episodes ago that we started a uh, new edition in our our Tuesday uh, podcast where my daughter and I began to discuss topics. And on this Uh, edition, I'm actually sharing thoughts out of my thought journal. All this is new for me. So all of this has changed. So when I talk about it today, listen, this is hitting home with me. You see, everybody, everybody want to progress. Everybody want to go forward. Everybody want to advance because we realize that there's always another level, always another level, another level of development. I want to develop. I want to go to another level. There's a, another level of achievement. I want to always be achieving more. Another level in our relationships. I've been married for almost 46 years, and I still believe there's another level that I can go in my marital relationship. There's always Uh, It can always get better. And then another level of influence. So we want progress. We want to move forward. But this thought says that change is the prerequisite for progress. In other words, this must happen before that happens. That's what prerequisite literally means. It means something must happen for something else to exist. So we're saying, and this is what the thought is saying, that change must happen before progress can happen. And when we resist change, we are resisting progress. Now, Change is the roadblock. We want the progress, but we resist change. I mentioned this some time ago uh, uh, about how my daughter was really challenging me to make some changes in our podcast, make some changes in our podcast, because she felt like we could grow and move forward, go to another level. But I have to admit, I was pushing back on it. I wasn't in a hurry to change. And and so really, this is one of those transparent moments where I have to evaluate because I've taught on change. In fact, as a pastor, every time we 
wanted to go to another level. I wanted to ch- share with my church and, and move, motivate my church to go to another level. And we will enter into another experience. I will always do a series on change. So I understand change. But but why do we resist it? And then I, I'll talk about me. Why do we resist it? There are multiple reasons why people resist change. Because when we resist change, we're actually resisting progress. Why do we? I, I think, and, and here again, the, I fall in all three categories. I think sometimes we resist change because of pride. I think sometimes we resist change because of loss. And sometimes we resist change because of discomfort. And I fail in all four categories, pride, loss, and discomfort. Sometimes we refuse to change, and, and, and my challenge with it, sometimes we refuse to change because for many people, many people, I, I don't think I fall in this particular category, for, but for many people to acknowledge change or to accept change is to acknowledge that the way we did things in the past was wrong. And maybe that is the case. Maybe the way we did things in the past was wrong and we need to change. I had another scenario uh, in my ministry where a member came up to me and said, said, Pastor, you can talk better than you talk. You can talk better than she was talking about uh, my grammar. She was talking about my my poor use of the English language. She was saying, and she was a beautiful believer, love me, love the church, very supportive, very kind, just just very sweet in her personality. So it had nothing to do with any negativity. She just loved me and she wanted me to grow. She wanted me to develop. And she said something like this, Pastor, you can talk better than you talk. Now, immediately when someone confronts you and it's a change thing, they want they they see something that that can help you inside of us. We 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 start resisting. We we start making excuses. We start uh in, in some cases we even get defensive. We get defensive uh not not all the time angry because I wasn't angry at her because I knew she loved me. I knew she supported the church. I know she cared for me. So it wasn't anger, it is that sense of pride. You know, sense of pride. But in that case, I didn't I didn't even push back. I actually went and enrolled in a technical college in our city and I took two classes and one of those classes was an English uh, course an English course I took a whole semester of it and and I learned a lot and and since then I've tried to grow and develop my communication skills and sometimes my subjects and verbs don't want to agree you know they want to get together but I, I talk much better than I did at that time so, so sometimes it's a feeling that I will have to acknowledge that everything that I did in the past was wrong. And, and that may be the case. It may be. I think in my case, my daughter was saying about changing our podcast and how we were doing some things. I don't think it was prior in the sense of feeling that the way we did it was wrong. I think the pride in my case was related to success. Sometimes you can do something and it can be very successful. 
And if we're not careful, we'll think that we should do it forever. You know, because that's me. That's the way I do it. That's the way God gifted me. She wasn't challenging me to change who I was. She was challenging the method. She was challenging the method. Because sometimes pride can hinder us because we're not making the adjustment that we need to make. Maybe what we did in the past was good. Maybe what we, the way we did something in the past was beneficial. Maybe it was successful. But does it fit today? Does it fit? Is it relevant for today's world? And I think that that's what she was saying to me and uh, about let's try something. Let's try something different. Let's let's try something different. And so, you know, I always have analogies in my head and illustrations in my head. And I remember I'm old enough to remember the rotary dial telephones where you put your finger in a circle and had several circles on the dial of the phone. And then there was a number one, two, three through nine. And then another circle that had zero. And when you call someone, you put if it's 205, you put it in the two and sh- go around. Then it comes back around. Then you put it in the zero and it comes around. And then, and, in other words, it was a rotary dial phone. And then they moved from that to the push tone phones. Still had the cord on the phone, limited where you could take the phone, but you would push the dials. Well, today we have smartphones smartphones. You can text, you can email, you can send messages, you can talk to the person and see the person through FaceTime. You can see the person that you're talking to. Well, the phone today is better than the rotary dial and the push button phones. Not because they were not good at the time, but those phones do not fit today's world. And sometimes pride hinder us like it did me initially. I'm redeemed, I'm delivered, but it hindered me because of success. Sometimes it's a sense of embarrassment, a sense of shame that I don't want to I want to admit that I missed it. Pride can hinder us from doing the wrong thing. And then sometimes there's a sense of loss. Whenever change comes, change is going to always create an ending. You can't have change and do the same thing. To change means something has to end. And normalcy is lost. What was normal is lost different is different and and a part of me didn't want to do something i just didn't want to do it different because why and that's another uh podcast where we're going to talk about comfort zone well sometimes we get in our comfort zone and change means we got to end that and do something different so to be transparent with you i'm feeling i'm feeling it i'm feeling the change And then there's the discomfort that comes with change. Discomfort. Sometimes change is uncomfortable. Anytime you do anything new, new method, new approach, a new relationship, a new place, new location, new school, new job, anything that you do initially, because it's new, will be uncomfortable kind of like the, the caterpillar transition into a butterfly. The caterpillar is a lava. It's a worm-like lava. It sits on a twig, eating leaves, crawling around. But to become a butterfly, it has to enter into a uncomfortable place which we which is called the cocoon in that cocoon the 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 lava 
spins a cocoon, flips itself, enters the cocoon, and in that cocoon is yellow, messy, gooey, mushy, sticky. It's a very uncomfortable place, but through the process of time, it becomes a beautiful, free butterfly. So discomfort is why sometimes people don't want to change. So I've talked about me and my pride and my desire to not lose and my desire to not be uncomfortable or experience discomfort. What about you? What, what about you? Change is the prerequisite for progress. And, and I give you a simple statement in relation to when you should change. So when should I change? You should change when you consistently are getting undesirable and bad results. You should change. Let's, let's look at that. You should change when you are consistently getting undesirable and bad or and or bad results. If what you're getting is not what you desire, whether it be in a relationship, whether it be in an organization, whether it be in your home, whether it be in business, whatever it is, change is the key to progress. It's the key to it. It's the prerequisite for progress. So, are you consistently getting undesirable or bad results? If so, you should change. And and those results, undesirable results, bad results, can actually manifest itself in different forms. Like, for example, frustration. If you're frustrated and if you have ongoing, ongoing frustration, it is symptomatic that you need to change your plan. If in your environment there's disharmony, it can be in your family environment, in your work environment, in your business environment, your school environment, if there's har- disharmony, if there's confusion, if there's distrust, then somebody has to make some changes, culture changes. When a social media age, you know, I was telling a pastor uh, not too long ago that if you're not on social media as a pastor, there's a good chance that your church will not grow. It will not grow. If you're waiting for people to just come to your church without any contact with them from a social media vantage point, live stream, podcast, whatever mode, then there's a good chance that you're not going to grow. Sometimes we just got habits. We just got habits that we need to change. I don't gain a lot of weight. I mean, I don't gain a lot of weight, but as I've aged, I, I, my midsection sometimes, have, my midsection start growing. I mean, it's, it, it, it start growing. And I, I start looking at my, my stomach and I said, no, nah, I don't want that. I, I just don't want that. Well, I want progress. Progress is a flat belly. I want a flat stomach. Okay, so change is a prerequisite to me having a flat stomach. So I just had to change some things about how I eat, you know, and, and you know, I, I've never been a, 
a, a, a just big sweet person. I mean, just huge sweets. And, and but I recently began to just get into sweets. Somebody gave me a Dunkin' Donut. I always said previously that I didn't care for Dunkin' Donuts. Okay, somebody gave me a plain Dunkin' Donut. And it was delicious. I mean, delicious. I started going by Dunkin' nearly every day to get this plain donut. And then I bring my wife, Pete, that's her nickname, Pete, donuts. She said, you, you, you eating a lot of donuts. I mean, you, you eating a lot of donuts. And, you know, I, I, I began to realize I wanted something different in my body. Not my my stomach is growing was growing a little bit. I could sense it with certain clothes that I put on, and I wanted a different result. I wanted progress, but I was doing something that was really adding to the problem. Eating all them donuts, eating all those sweets. So I decided. Now, I'm not telling you to do this, but I'm just telling you what I did. I decided, okay, I got to stay away from those sweets for a while. I got to stay away from most of them. You know, all the ice cream, and I love that ice cream. Love uh, Chick-fil-A ice cream. Love the ice cream. So I'm going to stay away from that. I'm staying away from the pies and the cakes and the desserts after meals. I, you know, I'm just going gonna, gonna to stay away from all that kind of stuff. Why? Because I wanted progress so if you want progress then change is the prerequisite when you resist change you're actually resisting progress now what about you what what are you what do you need to change? Well, let's back up. What do you, where do you want to go? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to have? What do you want to do? This is a good thought. This is a good thought. Got it out of my thought journal. What do you want? What is progress for you? Is it relational progress? Is it financial progress? Is it health progress? What 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 is progress for you? Is it business progress? Is it progress in your church? What what is, what is progress for you? Once you think about that, then remember that change is the prerequisite for the progress. So what do you have to change? What do you have to change? to get the progress that you want. Listen, that's my thought for the day. I trust that you're being blessed by it. Listen, every episode, we're going to have another thought. I'll go to my thought journal. I'll pull another thought out, and we're going to discuss it and share it with you. And I trust that it will be a blessing to you. Will you let us know how you're doing? How is this new format blessing you? This is our new edition entitled Just a Thought. Look forward to seeing you next time, and I pray you have a great rest of the week. Are you ready to break free from the chains of anxiety, stress, and depression? Mike Moore, author and founding pastor of Faith Chapel and host of the How to Win podcast, is here with his new book, Help, My Mind is Under Attack. Learn how to overcome attacks on your mind and live an emotionally healthy life. Grab your copy now, available as ebook on Amazon and paperback on MikeMoore.com. Embark on your journey to complete mental health and emotional peace.